we are down here at the O2, um, putting together a fantastic projection show on the top of the O2. Well, this is a very different projection show and not very few people will ever see it live. However, we're building a fantastic interactive system which allows people to send messages, have their messages displayed on the roof of the O2, over a 150 meter wide projection, and then have a picture of that projection sent back to their Twitter accounts. So three pieces of software we're using to run this show are D3, Touch Designer, and then just Web HTML5. So the first piece of software, D3, is our main projection software. We're using that to actually send a signal to the projectors. So it handles lineup, it handles blending, and all the timelining is done in that software. We use Touch Designer to feed real-time interactive media into the D3 server. So that goes in the D3 server and is then spread out to all the projectors. That Touch Designer takes an audio feed or pre-generated content and it reacts in real time to that beat and we get lovely effects over the top of the O2. The last piece of software we're using is HTML5. We're using that to generate the tweets, the actual images of the tweets. They're split into various sections, sent to the various machines projecting, and then shown on the roof. When they're all on the roof, we're then using some JavaScript technology to take pictures from six cameras, generate a GIF, and upload that back to the user. The main kit we have on, on site is 68 20,000 lumen projectors. Uh, we've got over 140 light fixtures. Um, which are based on the mass. Some of them light up, create a beam effect into the sky, and other, other lights are washing the canvas where we're not projecting. Uh, that's supported by a, quite a lot of rigging and lots of cables. Normally, building projection is relatively straightforward. Here, it's incredibly complicated. We've got a permanently disappearing canvas, so every time a projector strikes the canvas, it permanently kind of disappears and runs away with you. So creating the perfect system so that we had 48 projectors all blended together on the top of the dome is an incredibly complicated task. We've done a huge amount of simulation and pre-production uh, and the results are, uh, are showing at the moment. It really works. We've done an awful lot of simulation here in the studio. We've used D3 as our production workflow tool. So we have simulated every single projector position onto the outside of the O2. Uh, and from our initial test, we can really see this coming together. It's really going to work. Uh, it's, it's an exciting canvas to work with, it's also extremely challenging. A dome is very unforgiving when it comes to 3D projection graphics and as soon as you move what we would call off axis you can end up with a big distortion in the image. Uh, here we've actually taken that to our advantage. We've got a fixed camera right at the top of mask number four overlooking the entire O2. So as we've got a fixed camera angle, we're actually able to make extremely deep 3D extrusions and effects into the canvas. So what is really normally a bit of a challenge, we're playing with a fixed camera to our advantage and so we're able to really work the 3D effects even on a curved surface. It's massive, it's 365 metres across. I think the statistic was we could fit 10 Twickenham pitches on the roof of the O2. Uh, and it's hard to see when you just look at a postcard of it, but if you see a person walking around or one of the riggers on one of the masts, that really shows you the scale of this projection and the scale of the project. What excites me about this project, the scale of it all, the challenge of it all, uh, it's just bigger, better and faster than anything we've done before. And actually from a technical point of view, it's incredibly challenging and certainly world first. So that's why we're really excited to be working on it.